Pyramids of Gizeh. Undoubtedly one of the most impressive and famous historic sites of ancient Egypt. The land of the pharaohs. A land whose treasures are still, more than 4,000 years after their construction, truly remarkable. A total of 2.3 million stone blocks form the largest pyramid. King Cheops had this monument built in around 2560 BC on an elevated plateau on the edge of the western desert. It was believed that this pyramid was the entrance to the world of the dead. With this mighty pyramid, King Cheops hoped that after his death, it would ensure his existence in the next world. The neighboring pyramids of Chephren and Mykerinos were also built for this reason. They have become one of the most famous cultural landmarks in Egypt. The proud stone giants of Giza are the only ancient wonder of the world that have survived until the present day. Their construction and design are still a mystery. Beneath the pyramids, there is a further well-known mythological figure, the Sphinx. In Arabic, Abu el Hol, Quiet Father. This legendary creature consists of a lion's body and a human head. It was designed to deter grave robbers. Having evolved from early Neolithic roots in around 3000 BC, for the first time Egypt developed into a powerful and important culture. This marked the beginning of the age of the pharaohs and their magnificent monuments. The huge contours of the pyramids of Gizeh still dominate Cairo's surrounding landscape. Their dimensions symbolize timeless power. In red shining colors the sky announces the fall of dusk and highlights the dramatic, magical beauty of these monuments. Illuminated by spotlights at night, the monuments seem to become even more magical and mysterious. Archaeological treasures appear from the darkness and gradually fade into the shadows. A moving sight, a spectacular production. The leading actor in this fascinating play of light is the scenery itself. The Sphinx, the Temples and the Eternal Pyramids. Following the unification of both Upper and Lower Egypt, the pharaohs chose Memphis in the southern part of the Nile Delta as the capital of the New Kingdom. 
A large, severe-looking sphinx guards the grave of Egypt's former rulers. In the second millennium BC, the prosperous metropolis covered an area of around 15 kilometers in length. From Gizeh to Saqqara, in contrast to the hard-wearing granite and limestone of the temples, nothing remains of ancient Egypt's ordinary dwellings. Today, only a few statues remain within the ruins of one of the former capital cities of the pharaohs. The cultural acquisitions of the Egyptians are numerous and often quite puzzling. Although one of the greatest mysteries, that of the hieroglyphs, has now been solved. Around the beginning of the 19th century, these characters and symbols were deciphered and the inscriptions finally translated. The oldest stone inscriptions are almost 5,000 years old. The number of different characters grew from the original 700 hieroglyphs of the Old Kingdom to more than 6,000 characters in the Ptolemaic era. In addition to all the texts and inscriptions, this huge statue was also discovered in Memphis. The colossal statue of Ramses II was created from a single piece of granite. The step pyramid of King José rises up almost 70 meters above the ground. From an historical standpoint, it is the world's first monumental stone building. Due to the 110 by 121 meter rectangular ground plan of the Saqqara pyramids, the burial site of Memphis is reminiscent of an earlier architectural structure related to the pyramids, the Mastaba. Thus, the step pyramid of Djoser because of its exemplary architecture, is often referred to as the mother of all pyramids. A narrow, maze-like corridor leads from the outside world into the dark depths of the pyramid and the pharaoh's tomb. The builder of this mighty and massive grave was the famous intellectual and highly praised architect Imhotep.
the strong belief of life after death played an exceptionally important role for the people of ancient Egypt in both religion and society. For over 4,000 years, the buildings that date back to the time of the pharaohs have successfully survived the forces of nature, a fact that also colors this legendary historic epoch. The flowering period of Thebes began during the Middle Empire when it became the new capital and lasted up until around the 14th century BC when Memphis regained its importance and influence. Today, Thebes is closely connected with this town of death along the western shore of the Nile and the legendary Valley of the Kings. The Temple of Death of Queen Hatshepsut extends along a 300 meter high rock wall. Because her husband Tutmosis II died at an early age, the Queen ruled the country for 22 years. It is believed that Queen Hatshepsut was murdered by her stepson and nephew Tutmosis III. It has since been scientifically proven that shortly after her unexpected death, Tutmosis III ordered that her name be removed from each monument and temple. Hundreds of graves have been discovered on the extensive necropolis of Thebes. In addition to important members of the royal family, the graves of aristocrats, civil servants and priests have also been discovered here. The richly decorated columns within the great king's tombs frequently contain illustrations of the pharaoh making sacrifice to numerous gods. Tutmosis I, the first Egyptian sovereign to resemble a god, was buried in the Valley of the Kings. In order to protect his grave from thieves, he and his master builder Irene chose a remote and hidden place among the rocks. However, despite precautions taken by following generations, their final resting place was eventually plundered. For many years, the mummified bodies of the pharaohs lay undiscovered. Unlike the precious gifts that had been donated to the dead pharaohs, fortunately, the mummies that date back to the 17th and 20th dynasties have survived. In 1875, some peasants found several mummies within a rock. For Egyptologists, this was a sensational discovery. 
It is likely that priests hid the bodies of their dead sovereigns in order to protect them from grave robbers. In 1922, the discovery of the royal tomb of Tutankhamun by the British archaeologist Howard Carter was particularly important. After five years of excavation, the scientists were successful and the spectacular treasures surpassed their highest expectations. Although Tutankhamun died at the tender age of 19, his rule thus having little historical significance, the treasures in his tomb made him one of the most famous kings of ancient Egypt. Today, the legendary sarcophagus that is made entirely of gold is exhibited in the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. At the time of the New Kingdom, Thebes was at its zenith. The pharaohs squandered their wealth on huge monuments in a lavish bid to outdo all rivals. With the deciphering of the hieroglyphs, an increasing number of the secrets of the funeral sites and temples were revealed, and the texts understood. In ancient Egypt, death was considered to be an extension of life. Several illustrations and descriptions of the ancient Egyptian myth of the dead, the Book of Gates, adorn the walls and ceilings of these tombs. The magnificent illustrations of historic hunting scenes and other precious reliefs have made Hatshepsut's magnificent Temple of the Dead and its three terraces world famous. It is thought that these structures were built by the Queen's lover. Despite the work of archaeologists, the mummy of Hatshepsut has not yet been discovered. Up until now, more than 70 graves have been found in the neighboring Valley of the Queens. Princes who died at an early age were also buried here. The grave of Nefertari, the wife of Ramses II, is considered to be one of the most beautiful in the valley. The building is covered with wonderful wall paintings. According to ancient Egyptian belief, the hieroglyphs and artistic reliefs were designed to comfort the dead in the afterlife. Unlike the religious graves of the aristocracy, the texts of the civil graves depicted worldly matters, such as accounts of daily life. Close to Thebes and today's Luxor, 
along the eastern shore of the Nile is the temple area of Karnak. Here for 2,000 years the pharaohs built various sanctuaries. These buildings were constructed with no reference to the architectural and artistic designs of those that existed previously. Tutmosis I, Hatshepsut and the three Ramses kings are part of Karnak's history, being a few of its most important occupants. The greatest temple was dedicated to Amun, god of wind and air. The kings of the new kingdom made Amun the national god of Egypt. In the 16th century BC, he was also associated with the powerful sun god Ra. Beyond the huge gates of the temple that are known as pylons are the remains of an ancient wonder of the world. The 5,000 square meter great columned hall of Seti I and Ramses II. Several illustrations of women suggest that a unique ritual was held in the Amun temple in Karnak that was closely associated with the legendary history of the creation of ancient Egypt. Amun Re was the principal god of Thebes. In Egypt's new kingdom, he was considered to be the king of gods. According to legend, when Amun was seduced by his female companion Mut, both the universe and the world were created. By way of the Karnak ritual that took place in the most sacred part of the temple, women could become the divine wives of Amun and thus attain higher status within society. The Great Court, that covers an area of 8,000 square meters, is the largest of its kind in Egypt. Today, only one 21 meter high column still rises up into the sky. The sanctuary of Ramses III was later integrated within the courtyard. These gigantic and massive stone buildings have lost nothing of their daunting qualities. The entire temple area, with its great gates, radiates power and strength. In Karnak, there are a total of ten impressive pylons. The rulers of ancient Egypt hoped to win the favours of the gods in order to augment their positions of power as well as to increase their influence on the people. Two streets flanked by ram-headed sphinxes once led from Karnak to the River Nile and also towards Luxor.
long and impressive avenue once connected the Luxor Temple, located by the water's edge, with the holy district of Karnak, just a few kilometers away. The religious life of the former capital of Thebes was determined by the high priests of these magnificent temples. Amenophis III and Ramses II built the temple to honor the three Thebes gods, Amun, Mut and Chons. Together they created a divine family that according to the religious beliefs of the time embodied the basic principles of creation. Darkness surrounds the mysterious interior of the most sacred area of the temple. Normal citizens were not allowed within these chambers and halls. Even though the sanctuary was once used by Christians and now contains a mosque, the present-day condition of the ancient Luxor temple is remarkable. Originally, two obelisks stood in front of the large pylon of Ramses II. Today, only the left one remains in Egypt. The other 23-meter-high obelisk that weighs around 220 tons, and after a journey that took four years, arrived in France in 1833, where it still adorns the Place de la Concorde in Paris. The appearance of sunset and the subsequent nightly spectacle of the illuminated temples is an unforgettable experience. At night, the atmosphere of the ruins is one of mystique. The area around the Luxor temple appears to hold many undiscovered secret treasures. In 1989, some workmen unexpectedly stumbled across an underground hiding place that contained 26 priceless ancient Egyptian statues. Although the names of the ancient gods Amun, Mut and Chons belong to the past, the temple is still used for prayer within a mosque. Surrounded by large numbers of archaeological finds, the mosque has retained the religious traditions of these ancient buildings. Several illustrations and reliefs, some of which date back to Tutankhamun, recall the religious rituals of the pharaohs. They describe the festival of Opet and the long processions that took place between the Luxor temple and the sacred district of Karnak. Worship of the three divine gods in the inner sanctum of the temple was reserved solely for a few high priests and for the pharaoh himself. Normal citizens were not permitted to enter. It was only at the time of the new kingdom that the temple gradually lost its significance. Thebes, that in its golden years once had a million inhabitants, now had more testing times ahead. In 2000 BC, 
A sanctuary for Hathor was located in Dendera, the Egyptian goddess of love and music, dance and joy. However, today's temple was built much later, in the first century AD, and it took more than 40 years to construct. The illustrations within this temple are remarkable for many reasons. Hieroglyphs and portrayals within the reliefs contain the knowledge of thousands of years and also countless secrets. Several of the texts and illustrations focus on ancient Egyptian rituals and cults. The most important day in Dendera was the Feast of the Beautiful Union. It was then that the statue of Hathor was removed from deep within the temple and taken to her husband's sanctuary in Edfu. Although the temple was dedicated to Hathor, other gods were also worshipped in Dendera. These included related gods, such as her lover and husband Horus, and their son Aihi. Even today, the intimidating and mighty walls of the sanctuary possess a solemn atmosphere. In addition to an illustration that attracts much attention because of its mysterious light bulb-like objects, archaeologists discovered numerous hieroglyphs. They appeared on various walls of what is known as the Chamber of Technique, and this was the first time that these symbols had been seen. There are numerous legends and myths with regard to the immense technical achievements and knowledge of this culture. Even so, many questions will inevitably remain unanswered. However, today much more is known about the former religious rituals and the gods of ancient Egypt. Most of the portrayals and inscriptions depict Hathor in human form, but with horns, cow's ears and even the entire head of a cow. So far little is known of the precise symbolism of this unusual image that goes against the traditionally accepted concept of beauty. The deciphering of the hieroglyphs led to many fascinating insights into ancient fertility rites and thus gave an important perspective of the historically important sovereigns and religious mythological figures of Dendera. In the temple area, there are three beautiful birth houses. They date back to both the 30th dynasty of the pharaohs in the 4th century BC and also to the Roman period. These buildings were dedicated to the birth of Aihi, god of music and son of Hathor.
In Dendera, there are several traces of one of the most famous historical personalities of ancient Egypt, the legendary Cleopatra, last queen of the Ptolemaic people. However, its main designers, Domitian, Nerva and Trajan, were Roman. Between the birth houses are the ruins of a small early Christian church of the Copts. Thus the history of the cult site of Dendera dates back from ancient Egypt to the beginning of Christianity. As with the sanctuary at Dendera, the Horus Temple of Edfu was built by the Ptolemaics. A huge and demanding project, it was constructed between 237 and 57 BC. The architects took their work seriously, as they wanted to create a building that would last forever. The sanctuary, built in traditional ancient Egyptian style, with its tall and magnificent columns, is one of the country's most well-preserved temples. Inside, the impressively decorated Edfu temple with its hawk's head Horus, the god of the sky, contains a familiar motif with numerous variations. A total of 32 columns adorn the temple's large front courtyard that was protected from the outside world by a wall. The sun bark was the most important religious symbol. She was kept within the most sacred area. The interior of the temple contains an impressive abundance of hieroglyphs and relief-like paintings on the walls. The French Egyptologist Auguste Mariette discovered this unique building in the middle of the 19th century. Scientifically, there is much within the temple. Until 1975, only around 10% of the hieroglyphs of Edfu had been deciphered. There are several thousands of inscriptions that decorate the mighty, several metre high walls of the ten inner rooms. More than 2,000 years ago, these rooms served various ritualistic purposes. Precious religious objects were also stored here. The Horus Temple of Edfu provides an indelible impression of the fascinating and intriguing historic culture and religion of ancient Egypt.
Within a small chapel that was dedicated to the goddess Hathor, there are the mummified remains of ancient Nile crocodiles. The chapel is situated on the archaeological site of Kom Ombo. These dangerous reptiles were worshipped as sacred animals. The division of the temple into two parts is unlike other Egyptian sanctuaries. One section of the building was dedicated to the god Sobek with his crocodile head and the other contained the god Harueris with his falcon head. For many years this has been the nightly setting of a dramatic and atmospheric light show. The mysterious nocturnal ambience seems to make the ruins come alive. Long before the unique construction of the Ptolemaic double temple in the first century BC, there were already many older sanctuaries located here above a rock plateau on the Nile. Each year, festivals for the gods were held here as well as the official celebrations of the pharaohs. The walls of the Komombo temple contain inscriptions of various rituals and also a religious calendar. Sobek was considered to be the god of fertility, who was at times also regarded as the creator. The name Harueris belonged to the adult god Horus, whose main cult location was here in Komombo. Scenes of sacrifice with various kings decorate the walls of the building. The temple's exterior contains a number of unusual reliefs that depict medical implements, such as surgical knives and tweezers. Thus, this cabinet of instruments has been immortalized in stone. Thanks to its convenient location, Kom Ombo developed into a prosperous economic centre. The remains of the Philae temple also date from the Ptolemaics, even though it is not in its original location. In 1980, the sanctuary, having become severely endangered because of frequent flooding, was relocated thanks to an international rescue operation. Even 19th century travelers appreciated the beauty of the buildings and the natural surroundings of the temple's sacred island. Today's reconstruction on the neighboring island of Agilkia still provides a splendid impression of the original buildings. During the transfer of the huge stones, columns and statues, the original foundation of the temple was overlooked. Thus the age of this Isis sanctuary is still unknown. On the island of Agilkia, the oldest remaining architectural elements date back to Nectanibos I and the 30th dynasty. In 
It is believed that the last hieroglyph was added in 394 AD. When religious belief connected with the ancient gods began to dwindle and each of the other ancient Egyptian temples had been abandoned, the Isis cult on Philae continued until the 6th century. Next to the pavilions of Nectanibos and the Roman Emperor Trajan, there was a smaller Hathor sanctuary in the temple district. Toward the beginning of the new kingdom, Hathor was increasingly associated with a goddess Isis, the wife and sister of Osiris, the god of the netherworld and of resurrection. Since completion of the first Aswan Dam in 1902, Philae was often flooded. The annual floods sometimes continued for up to nine months. This Egyptian sanctuary, like many others, had a nilometer, a device that measured the water level in times of flood. The water level of the Nile played an important role in the calculation of the ancient tax system. If the water level was high, the area of cultivatable land became larger as did the harvest resulting in higher taxes. The original measuring point of Philae was lost in the water of the Nasa Lake. Today, it almost seems like a miracle how the majestic temple of this ancient cult still rises above the water. Due to the threatening increase in the water level between 1965 and 1968, the Abu Simbel temple was moved from its ancient original location. Today, there is no sign of the construction of this ancient site. In front of the great temple are four mighty 20 meter high colossal statues of a famous pharaoh, King Ramses II. During his lifetime, the southern border of the Egyptian Empire ran through Abu Simbel. The temple not only served religious purposes, but was also an awesome symbol of power. The sanctuary was designed to stamp the authority of Ramses II on the Nubians and other neighboring peoples. Several illustrations feature the glorious military victories of the Egyptians. A popular recurring theme of the famous ruler was the great battle of Hethiter at Quadesh. To save face on behalf of the pharaoh, this battle was depicted as a victory, but the truth was that the Egyptian army barely escaped bitter defeat. The illustrations reflect the military prowess of Ramses II. The sacred symbols extend almost endlessly across the walls and columns of the interior of the Abu Simbel temple. This sanctuary gained its fame due to its wonder of the sun, a phenomenon in which the sunlight twice a year 
illuminates the temple's inner sanctum for a few tantalizing minutes. King Ramses II was not afraid of presenting himself as a living god. During the wonder of the sun, the light moves across the god Amun and then over to the pharaoh, where it lingers until it finally reaches Ra Harakte. Ramses II reigned over Egypt for almost seven centuries. Numerous extravagant buildings such as the Ramesium in Thebes and the Abu Simbel Temple pushed his empire to the edge of financial ruin. The Egyptian king's rule came to an end in 332 BC with the victory of Alexander the Great. But the ancient buildings have survived to the present day in this remarkable land of the pharaohs. <laughs>